Joining us today, and we welcome along to this uh, workshop of the Central Otago District Council in its full voice with community board members and chairs uh, both here with us and online. It's fantastic to have uh, those folks who can make it be here with us today. I'll hand over to staff very shortly. Uh, I just want to say, oh, I'm also welcome to those who may be watching online um, from the public and um, also for anyone who may be watching delay. Just a very brief scene setter from me before I hand over to Susan and Saskia. Today is a, a workshop. No decisions are made in a workshop. It's, a, it's a, a look at how we may go forward. There's no predetermination in this, but it's a conversation that I feel is mere needs to be had. Are there benefits to, I was going to say are there benefits to digitization, but I'm going to reframe that and reshape it because the question is, are there benefits to continuing with digitization? One of the slides we'll see today shows that of our rates revenue at the moment, 82% is effectively already digitized. When you look at our three borders, our roading and our other major things such as that, an awful amount of what we've done has been digitized by councils before us. And I believe firmly that we've seen the benefits in roading and have seen and will see the benefits in the three water space that districtisation is brought to all parts of the district. And one of the things as this journey progresses that we need to keep in mind is not just what it would mean if we go ahead with this today, but what yesterday influences upon us and what it will mean for tomorrow. We have to avoid what I like to call chronological parochialism and just look at the here and now. Because if we look at three waters, when that happened, it wasn't seen as a good thing for Cromwell, that the bills that are coming in for Cromwell now to treat the nitrates and expand the drinking water plant are being paid by everybody, not just Cromwell. So the people of Cromwell today might be happy, whereas the people of Cromwell yesterday may not have been. And we could go through so many different stories of that with our previous districtisations. One of the things that needs to be very clearly and will be very clearly in my mind and in everyone's mind is if this goes ahead, what does it mean for the pools? And I have had some people in the public, fortunately, board members, although I can't read people's minds, say that it's my view board should go. I absolutely, absolutely say that that is not the truth. I think our boards are fundamentally crucial to democracy and to the well-being of Central Otago. It's just whether how they operate is going to maintain the same if we do this. So part of the conversation would be what opportunities are there for the boards as we move forward. And I think yesterday with Anna Harrison coming and giving a great talk to the council on the broad scope of what's happening in Cromwell is a fantastic uh, expression of how things could move, part of how things could move going forward. These are things to discuss as we move along on a journey that has no destination, but we're going to take it. Over to you guys. Yeah. Peter, you're yeah. Now, thank you, Your Worship. Um, yeah, so, I mean, this is, um, has its sense of government. You were very clear uh, in your intent as a council and as community boards that you wanted to have the digitization discussion uh, after we had that delegation discussion on the ship. So this was the opportunity to bring this back to council uh, and have it. We, we had taken on board the comments you made around the delegation, so there is time for this. Community board members are here today, chairs are here today. Um, to be able to have an engagement with councillors and with the community boards um, as we work our way through what is digitisation, what could it be, uh, what won't it be in the lights. Um, we do have a special consultative process as well. So we will be going out to the community as a result of once we've had all these conversations in August, to see what the community is using. That will come back at the end of August. And then what that means is we have a decision point as uh, elected members, many board councillors, in September, because we need that decision point at the end of September, because the outcome of the digitisation discussion will be the start point for our financing and revenue policy planning for the long term, which must occur obviously between now and June of next year. So this is a really key part of that work. And so the decision, whatever that is, that's reached in September, will then feed directly into the LTP. Um, this districtisation discussion is not about levels of service. All this is about is, will we retain ward-based rates for some activities, or will we go to a district-wide rate for those activities? So it's essentially comparing the status quo 
to district closing. It's not about increasing hours, shortening hours, stopping this, starting that. That's an LTP discussion. That will flow on from districtization, depending on whatever decisions are reached. So let's not fall in the trap of um, going down too much of the levels of service discussion because this is not what this is about. This is about the sourcing of funding. Should it remain board based this activity or should it be districtized? Much like the discussions we've had a number of years ago around roads and green waters. The other discussion will have to come back, and that's the guidance we've got from the councillors before the end of this year, because there is a link between the two. If council boards choose to amend, uh, change the way we do board based rates for district high rates, then that will have a flow on into the delegation discussion. So that will also come back. So the two are connected, uh, but this is leading uh, delegations. And of course, overarching all of this, and this will feed into it as well, is the LTP. We've been given a 12 month deferral. We have to adopt an LTP by the end of June of next year. All of this will play into the next long term plan. So this is you know, a whole yeah, series, series over the next what, 13, 13 months. months important for the future of central Ontario district council. We know it's growing 12.6%. Um, yeah. And the team will be able to walk you through this uh, today. And then we're obviously open to taking questions at any stage post this as so we bring it back to community meals and council. So yeah. Thank you. Um, so Susan and I will tag team um, this morning. Um, we will take questions as we go, um, rather than you having to say when you get questions um, for the end. So our first slide, our first couple of slides actually Peter's um, already um, gone through a bit of this, so we'll work through these. Um, as Peter said, um, we strongly heard your feedback with the delegation conversation earlier this year that you actually wanted this districtisation conversation first, so hence with the starting back um, today. Um, Central Otago District Council, um, we, we've looked at this in the past, you see the second um, bullet there, we, we have um, had significant um, activities that were ward based at different um, periods in our past that have become um, district um, rates. So what we're going to walk you through today is the, second, the third bullet there, we've, we've got five work streams, um, there's a lot of um, factors to consider, so we'll provide each of those and as um, Peter's uh, mentioned, all of this um, depend on where it lands. Um, if council ultimately decides to go to the community and and all this for their feedback and, and makes a decision, is that um, the these changes will be reflected in the revenue and financing policy as part of the long term plan. And as Peter did say again to uh, just stress today um, in this conversation with that community is not about changing the, the level of service in Cromwell and Manitoba um, or the Teviot. Um, it's about just bringing that that rate up to a district rate. Right? So next find, and I'll hand it over to Susan. OK, so obviously um, through this discussion, there's some drivers for it. Um, and the first one here, efficiency, reduced administration and improved transparency. Um, I think probably all um, councillors and community members have experienced over this last um, annual plan consultation the confusion around the voting system um, and how we rate the, the various things. So um, there is some efficiency to be gained in that. Um, there's also improved transparency to be gained by actually districtizing the rates um, because if we are going down to a regular level for a small percentage of their um, their rate take by doing it at a raw level, um, and that just adds to confusion and, and that sort of transparency. Um, affordability, we've really got to look at what's affordable. We've got to get back to the basics of your financial strategy over the next 10 to 30 years. Um, we are in debt now, and that will grow significantly. Um, we will meet the debt covenant at the moment in year four of our LTP. Um, so if we do not use some um, main sale money for um, the likes of some of our upgrades, we will actually meet a debt level a lot sooner in year four. Um, so that 
is a concern. What we're talking about today is very draft LTP figures. So um, we do need to go back and, and revise years two to ten. So, um, but this gives you a flavour of, of what we're looking at. Um, the other um, driver for this conversation is around the district wide levies, particularly when we're looking at things like um, the long term in their sport and reef facilities. Um, and holds, etc. Et so we're we're trying to um, we've really got to get out of the here and now and be looking at the next few years of hold and actually the other fun things going forward in an affordable and sustainable way. Um, so next, see my brain. So just um, this is relevant to the discussion. Um, the start of the discussion is that. We do, um, we really need to emphasize this is not a legal service discussion, it will come. Um, there will be lots of things that flow on from this. Um, and the reason, as Peter already said, is the reason that we're dealing with this now is because it has to flow into the long term plan, the revenue and financing policy, and the financial strategy. We've really got to have that financial strategy um, discussion that's looking really long term. So, yep. Yep. Right. I just I'll touch on um, land sales. So we have further legal advice, and of course, um, endowment land needs to be um, for the better of betterment of borough funds. So it is one fence to the board. Um, however, there is. Um, there, there is, we are allowed to use the endowment land sales to do projects within that route. So we could sell endowment land and fund a wastewater or water um, upgrade within the ward, which would then give benefit to the rest of the district in the whole financial strategy perspective. With debt levels and, and um, repayments and, and the effect of that on your rates. Okay. Um, other land sales, we have um, that it's council green, so um, it can have the district benefit. And, and that's something that we've really got to look at. I can't um, emphasize enough that it's not just your rates and credits. You were your debt profile, that's your balance sheet issues over the long term, and that's what um, that's a big point of driving this conversation. Um, so can I just clarify that, Susan? That there's under the legislation there are there is a limit to how much you can borrow, and it's based on your rates revenue. The effect that when we had that limit, there's two limits. There's one where we would have to, if we had that, then we would have to go and get a um, credit rating, and that would lift it a bit. But eventually. When you hit those limits, you then start paying cash for all the things you need. So instead of spreading the cost over the gears that borrowing allows you to do, you run out of borrowing, you run out of time, and your rate payers of today, because we've got the infrastructure hump that the whole country's facing, your rate payers of today are going to have to be doing all the paying for into the future. So it's not just a it's not just a, a sort of an ethical problem or something like that reaching your debt ceiling. It's going to make a massive impact on rates. If and when we get to that point. Yeah, and look, it comes back to the fact that we weren't necessarily, we, we, we used to have cash reserves. Um, that wasn't necessarily a good mm. thing mm. because you're actually, um, the, the, the generation then were consuming the assets without paying for the assets. Mm. So, so we do have, we, we can't get out of it, we've got um, an issue with past not being um, charging is what we should be charging. And now we've got this big ballet as well. So um, so that's why we hit those levels pretty quickly. Um, now we've got the maps of land on SharePoint. It's been renamed, it was um, down as endowment land. There's all land parcels in here that, um, so your reserves, your, um, 
your land for sale and, and then there's a separate um, couple of maps that have got the endowment land on it. So just so that you're aware, um, it's everything across the board and we've uplifted um, Miller's flat and Petrick, I believe, Christy, would be said. Yeah. Just to make sure people understand the difference, reserve land we manage on behalf of the Crown, generally speaking, in stock or maybe in limbs. If we were to say, hey, we've sold that land, we can't. We release that back to the Crown, it goes through the Montana process, we're out, we're, we're done. We get nothing back from that. Endowment land is what's been endowed to previous um, borough councils, generally speaking. That has to be spent in the area that it's from. And then there's an, an amount of land that is actually district land that, that we wish to sell it, we can do what we want. Yeah. But there were numbers. Uh, Linda's going to correct me a bit. Else because I'm making it too simple. Linda. <laughs> sort of. Um, so there's endowed land, and then there's fee simple land. So that's land that's not restricted in any way, shape, or form. We do. Uh, we own it like any other party that owns their property. Um, but there are a couple of different types of reserve land. Um, so there is res well, it's true, really. Um, there is reserves that have vested in council on deposit, so they are the types of parcels that you see coming out of subdivisions. So, um, for example, I, I just randomly looking at something in um, Willing Creek, and we've just received a new um, reserve that has come out of that. It's a local purpose review, and because it vested on deposit, it transferred to council in fee simple. So we actually own that reserve. So any new reserves which have come out of developments vest in us in fee simple and they are not subject to any of that provisions or um, that are still subject to the Reserves Act, just the same as the rest of it. Then you have Crown derived reserves, which are um, they are made vested in any number of parties like DOC um, or LINS uh, or any of those people. And sometimes what we call that is we are appointed to manage and control it. So effectively we get to mow the lawn and look after it for the Department of Conservation. And then we have reserves which um, may be vested in the council, which if you track back to titles uh, or the lead notices long enough to work out where um, they were actually vested in council and you can, we can then sometimes obtain these simple titles. It's kind of like a transmission of the law that just because of when it happened, we can then get a fee simple title. Then you have reserves which are subject to the Naitapu Plains Settlement Act. So they are reserves that if we decided that we did not want them or were not able to control or manage them. Um, if we wanted to dispose of them, we couldn't like revoke the classification or anything and find valid. It would then go back to Naitahu and they would have first right of refusal. So some reserves subject to Naitahu claims, some are not subject to Naitahu claims, and some are completely owned in fee simple, and some are a bit challenging, but if we hunt away back to the 1800s and through seasons, we might be able to obtain um, those fee simple projects. So, it's a bit more complicated than that. <laughs> yeah. I guess the point, uh, the point that I was getting to was there have been claims that we own $3 billion of land and so forth. Yes. Now. Mm. Um, moving on. So it's been confusing, and now we're talking about reserve accounts. So these are nothing to do with the reserves, is it? The land. Um, so, so each board has reserve accounts, um, and basically we can amalgamate those. Um, but but there is sort of stuff in there that is actually just specific to the way that we've been accounting for things. So we can amalgamate those in a districtisation, centralisation process. Um, so there's unders and overs um, across each ward. Um, but if we go to the, the graph, um, you can see in 2025 that um, things are pretty pretty similar, um, and that's after the fill of the common royal court. So um, that's about the reserves being used in that first part in the common memorial board build. Um, the reason it goes 
into um, deficit for the many Toto in those out years is because of the earthquake prone buildings that are currently sitting in um, the strengthening requirements within the LTP expenditure. So that would become a level of service discussion down the track. So is this, sorry, is this assuming it is not discretized or assuming it is discretized? So the bars are um, assuming not discretized and the, the line across the top is with that discretized. I think the example you've shown there is a really useful one. So if we keep going the way we're going, then money total the amount of total award through the board is going to go into massive debt to reach the obligations that it has to if it's going to maintain all of its support. If it's districtized, that obligation will be spread amongst all of the districts. But the decision whether to keep all of those with all of those will be made at a district level with significant input from the money total community, without a doubt. But that, that's, that's the plan. If everyone's going to pay for that thing, get the money tailor, in this one instance we face, the trade off is that around this table, where we know what our debt level is overall and how it binds up with everything else we've got to deal with, the decision would be made here. But I emphasize again with massive input from the product. Okay, so there is only 80% of all rates that we're looking at here that are completely legal. So out of our whole pie, we've got 82% of our rates are already districtized. Um, okay, can you just next slide? And next slide. We've got this slide in here. Um, this is, is, is endeavouring to give the model working with like for like numbers. Okay, so this is not, as I can't emphasize enough, we're not talking about level of service change here, but because we've got a lot of museums um, and their buildings um, and their earthquake strengthening um, capital works, etc., and we've got various forms of um, who grants what to some of them like museums and also pulled. We have pulled everything and said, let's make it, let's put it in the district model only for modelling purposes, just so that we're consistent, so there's been no decision made. It's just so that we actually don't just have, say, Vincent's pull and um, Trump's pull we have in Rangford pool, we actually um, have the grants that are going to the Roxburgh pool included in the facts in the Millersville pool. So, so it's only the consistency of numbers so that we understand what we're looking at overall. Then there will be level of service discussions down the track. And likewise with the museums, which I know we have um, looked at um, previously, some museums are housed within council buildings, some are not. So as part of the, the modelling that was um, shortly going to present, as it does have property brought up to the district level. So in terms of the museums, as the students say, just so you actually um, are all looking consistently the same thing, the grants for all museums are currently in the model. Um, so that's, for example, the, the, the Cromwell Museum, um, Central Stories and Alex, um, of course, that's direction for you all um, to, to, to give us as we go um, through this, these conversations around how that looks. Um, next slide. Um, sorry, can I just go then? So you've got ward out to not equal district down. Or okay, so... Or wouldn't they be? No, so... Um, Broad out is actually meaning that, that that's your grants pot that you would still look at. So the community boards basically would have grants and promotions. So excluded from the analysis. So if, if you take the TVIP, for example, the amount 
um, you have um, $10,000 in your grants pot. That is excluded from, at this stage, from the district model. Oh, so our means of excluding from yeah. the district for yeah. digitalisation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, look, we've just um, put this up here. This is the program um, at the moment. Um, and I think you can see very clearly the earthquake prone buildings that we've got um, and how that's driving quite a bit of capex work in, in this particular rating um, category. So that we we're talking about the 18% here that are all based, um, and these are the capital um, consequences of that. And this is looking forward, it's not backwards. Yeah, it's looking forward. What's in the draft um, at the right, so we go on to looking at um, what it may look like um, based on the numbers that we've got at the moment, um, and that's what we'll talk about now. So just a little bit of background. You tried. Um, so Obviously, we've done this program before. This is the three waters. It was digitised. Um, we consulted in 2015 and actually actually digitised the, the year after. Um, we've got the winners there. Um, what this is, is if you look at, well, it's like, um, for example, the TV at Valley, um, they saved on an annual basis, $714. Now that is back in the 2015 numbers. So any water um, maintenance and water and waste water upgrades, et cetera, are a lot more expensive now than they were. So on an annual basis with water, Tibet Valley saves 714 They were quite the big winners. Um, we had um, areas in um, Vincent that were winners and um, from Wolves rates increased as a result. Any any questions on that? I think that illustrates the point that I made though about this was not all good today or tomorrow because yesterday yeah. there were winners and losers then as well. And they may not be the winners and losers today. Yeah, that's right. Um, and, you know, we were very mindful at the time with the increasing standards that actually smaller communities couldn't afford um, these standards and that's why we needed to do this, which is a, the same thing, the same thing in a factory now we can't afford um, to actually run things and, um, and, and go into debt to, to the significant levels without actually having some counter to that. And did it even in the cost out like that have any impact on the level of service? No, it probably um, it meant that we could actually get a consistent level of service and um, it was very much around um, making sure that we could comply with the standards that we needed to. So, I think if we hadn't have done that. There would have been significant impact on your resource service. Yeah. Because a small community couldn't have got it. significant debt to get, meet the regulatory requirements. Yeah. It might not have been possible. Mm. You know, have, well, the money you're told is going to need in terms of three waters. There's no chance the money you're could pay for their homes. We would probably can't pay for it. Well, then we want to get But that's good. Yeah. Same with grading. Um, obviously, the uh, um, rural areas have been a um, significant advantage there. Um, and yeah, once again, affordability issues. So the red line is is what we all pay, but that's what you would pay if, if Manitoba was paying for its own roads, like yep. pre two thousand and thirteen. Then it would be paying 736. No, sorry, it's got 736. Yes, it's paying uh, 2,000 to 3,600 or whatever 
Yeah. As opposed to Cromwell's 300. That there is, is one of the greatest examples we've ever seen the benefits of digitalisation. And that's today. So the previous slide was looking back when three orders was done in 16, uh, 14. That's, you know, pretty much up to date. And that's again what I'm saying is that we can't and we can't just look at it the here and now, we've got to look at this today and tomorrow in this discussion in the room. Okay. So you can see this is just to let you know that these are how things are split out um, at the moment. Um, and you'll see that France is actually the brain fence because we will still um, that's out of the scope of this for the community board plots, etc. Um, so it is quite a complicated grading um, system that we're using. So the recreation culture charge is the same across the whole district, is it? No, no. So at the moment, so these are all ward based. Yeah. Okay, so so what we're getting charged is different to what um, Cromwell's getting charged, etc. And that's the point is actually to, to bring this all into the district rate um, so that we can maintain the levels of service and or work through you service discussions and actually provide everything to the communities that we do in a more affordable way. So that's just at the moment we have um, another complication in the fact that we rate per unit basis um, for some and on a capital value basis for others. So not only do we chunk it down into the raw particular rates, then we actually um, calculate those rates differently. Um, so that's where the complications come in. Um, Okay, so just trying to look at um, the pie graph is about uh, um, cost. So you can see of that 18% um, where we spent, where, where they come from. So that's um, per activity. So like so the recreation and culture is um, is probably the darker ones there or Ripped up into one. So um, it, it is the biggest chunk of um, air rating base for what yours. No, so I guess if you see the big number on the table on the right down the bottom, 137 million, that's the total 10 year expenditure that relates to that program. So all the stuff that's currently district cost, currently uh, ward based. Well, thanks. There's 137 million over the next 10 years. So if you wanted those percentages on the left and the dollar values. Yeah, okay, we'll go to the next one. So this is the average impact per rating unit if we do districtize on an annual basis. So it's taking that 10 years and um, 10 years expenditure and actually um, dividing it by the 10 years. And that would be um, the annual average change. I think the next one is actually really, um, the next slide is actually really good here. So what we've got here is the, um, the year on year expenditure for each community. So the bars are the ward, the status quo, um, the ward rate for um, those activities, so the 18%. Then the line is actually it was digitized. <clears throat> so you can see down the bottom where the numbers are, 
it's um, we got one of the better term the winners and the losers through this process. Um, then we've provided another slide. If we were to add a level of service discussion in and say decided to actually um, have a poll, a council run poll in each of one of our rooms as part of a level of service, we would add in um, extra costs for the ROPS report. Um, currently it's community and there's no ability to actually um, fund depreciation, um, staff costs, that sort of thing. So it's community run. Um, that would cause an increase in, um, if, if council was to take that over, um, to the TV Valley um, rates if we didn't districtize. So you can see that um, between the two, I'll just be here to, um, between the two, can you? Okay. Yeah, so if you, if you go, yeah, yeah. So you can see that um, this this bar right here, um, this bar is barely, so it's, it's quite consistent. Um, and if we go to the next graph, this is you can see it's increasing, and this is this is because we would change potentially change the years of the service, take that call over. But if that was the case, the TV Valley would be paying more. So they're up to the they're pretty much up at the district line. This is the districtization line. This one with the dots is actually the change to the district rate if it was districtized. OK, so so the difference between. Um, that we took it off. And we, oh, if we took it off, if we took, for instance, the rocks would fall on um, and we districtized at the same time, um, we're talking about $30. <laughs> we're talking quite um, a bit more significant. We were talking about um, to do So just to really emphasise, and particularly for people who may be listening um, in the TV, there's no, this isn't the council trying to steal the rocks with pool at all. But pool's are one of our biggest cost drivers, and every other board has a council pool. TV doesn't. TV's done a fantastic job with its pools itself, and and there would have to be a discussion for the TV to say. Hey, this would make things perhaps from the TV's perspective fairer if you were council were to do that. But just to be really clear, we can't go and say we're having more pull to make our, our numbers better. That's not what we're talking about here whatsoever. But if there's a fairness discussion, um, the pool does cause a drag on the TV at Valley, which the other districts have paid, the, the others would be um, not having, if it was districtized, would all be sharing. So it's, it's an option. But it's an option for the TV to take up should it wish and should council decide that's the way to go. It's not something the council can for a moment impose. But this issue is a, is a good example because if everything did get districtized or centralized, um, how would we in the TV at Valley bid for extra service that we might want in the pool? So we want three people there now, not just one. Well, that's the MPP discussion. If, you know, to change the level of service, you want, you know, bring in mind it's now thoughtful, but it's going to be, it's going to have a shoulder by the side. But in terms of operating hours, uh, lifeguard support and that sort of stuff, that's a conversation for the LTP. She will be, she's going to run it till 10 o'clock at night and something. Okay, well, the cost to that, and then that's an LTP discussion, and then it feeds into the budget. And we'll, and it would be spread across that community if it was described. If it wasn't described, spread across you three plus a handful of others. Yeah, and LTP locks it in. And every three years we review the LTP 
and then the annual plan implements the, the meter at three years on the OTP. Without getting too far ahead of ourselves, the best example for the TV to look at would be the Manning Toto, because it would be very similar. Mm -hmm. We operate a pool there, and, and it's an older pool, you've got the benefit of a newer pool, but a pump breaks down, the district pays for it. The pump breaks down in Roxbury, you guys are out cap on hand um, There was a staffing crisis at Manning Toto earlier this year, couldn't get staff, so staff came from Alexandria. What are you guys, what's going to happen down there? Um, when the pool, you know, we're in the long term game here. When the pool does start to wear out, it's beautiful, sparkling and new now. It's a gorgeous pool. Um, but when it starts to wear out and it needs to replace, you're not depreciating. The district will be depreciating the pool. But the flip side, when Ramfer really said, hey, we want the pool to stay open for an extra couple of weeks at the edge of each season, we talked to the board, we heard what the board said. And I think we were in lockstep because it was financially just not viable. But the board, again, it's the importance of the board to say, our community have said to us, we really want to keep swimming here. And then if we come to the state of the table, and we'd have to look at it in the whole, in the fairness of, hey, everybody's paying for this. Is this a good thing? Is it, is it reasonable for the district to pay $42 for every $1 of the swimmers spending? Pretty easy decision. But that's how it would work. And the board's role would be to advocate really strongly for what the board is hearing the public say. So, if we went down. I guess um, I'm, I'm about to finish off. Um, the really big issue here is a long term financial strategy. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we need to put that in place. And, um, it's really, really important that we are looking long term and we're looking at the effect of our capital program. And um, so, you know, beyond 10 years, um, our capital program, we have to do an infrastructure strategy, which is 30 years. Um, we need to we need to know where we're going and how we can actually fund the things that are happening um, and whether that we can get away from. Any questions on that? So my, my question is, what's the bidding process for OPEX and in particular the CAPEX as well? What's the suggestion for that? Like how would that how would that work in the future? Well, but that's that's just, that's again, you know, we were about to start it in October, but LTP discussions. What are the funding baselines for the next 10 years for our operating costs? And our capital cost. What are the capital projects that we're going to have to do over the next 10 years across the four wards? How are we going to fund them? How are we going to afford them? Knowing that at the moment we think four, three waters is about 400 million, might come down, but it's sort of the headline figure. Mm -hmm. So in the round, the LTP discussion would put it all in. We would discuss with the community boards, if you were to district us. What's your priority? What what is it that if you have this capex program over ten years, what are your absolute priorities? And then those priorities would have to come back to council because the whole part of this is about the affordability. You know, right now our debt level is pretty low. We can go to 175% of our revenue, but what's that? That's about 108 million. Well, if three borders is 400 million. It ain't going to take us long to get that. Even if we get a credit rate and go to 285% of our debt level, yeah. it's still only 170 million, so. Yeah. Well, we're going to reach that in a few years' time. You know, so all this has to go into the round, and then we all have to say, okay, in light of all the costs that are coming through the council, we are our priorities around the capex. And of course, we're community wide, so we'll have to focus on, on being able to achieve outcomes for all parts of our community. But, you know, it's going to be a really Challenging balancing that affordability, capex, objects, levels of service. This is going to be a tough conversation. <clears throat> hey, the capital the capex, you're talking around three waters, is currently based on the thinking that we will be responsible for it all. Is that correct? Yeah, the assumption is right now we are, we yeah. have to deal with it. We have to manage it. So <clears throat> that could possibly change. This afternoon. Always the optimist. The other question I had was that the slide about two or three previous to this where they had um, the 
don't know how and Cromwell sort of had benefits, but there was a huge gap mm-hmm. between Tibia and that's yeah, the one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, no. One of the, yeah. Is it the reserve accounts? Yeah. Uh, it's showing for the shop. It was just a couple of the tin was sort of way. I, I just couldn't understand why. The orange one. The orange was slightly. I don't know. It's good. It's good. It's good. It might have been on the other set of slides. Off one, off one. Was it the reserve account? Yeah. No, no, no. Keep going. Keep going. No, no, it's not. Go to the wrong way. Don't move in the stop. Keep going to the first one of the four. What else? I tried to discuss it. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, that's that's something we probably jumped ahead to the yeah. books. That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the main to drive behind that is that you know, under disputisation, yeah. TVF would be helping pay for Molyneux and Cromwell and ran through the books whilst but, maintaining its own. Do you the, the figure? So the figure on that one is two hundred and thirty-three dollars um, barrel yeah, average. Do you know what it would be if the TV at, if Roxbury Hall was in the? Yeah. Okay, so there is basically the um, go to or two sides. Why, why wouldn't it be in there? I'm now confused. Because we're not because we own it because we own the whole. So that's where it changes so instead of so yes, it was then. being taken. Yeah. It's about thirty dollars. Is that what you said, Susan? Yes, yeah, so gone from eight to. But it goes to the yeah. Even if you go back to one slide. That's yeah. yeah, so you're um, 150. Yeah. That's in year 10 if you're experiencing it. 150, yes, yeah, 133. So if the Rocks were captured under disposition, then it would be appreciated. Yes. Yes. And everyone would be paying. So that's protected as. Very across. That's three across. So you're only talking about sort of like, um, let's see, 233, you're probably looking at about 80. So that 100, extra 187,000 for the pulse, that's about $103 in the value pays alone. Yeah. Or it's an extra $12 in the district. That's the district. Right. 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 So that, that's the one for the. Yeah. So, yeah. At the moment, the community of Noble Fuel and um, if we were just digitizing without any even a service change through here, um, I think we'd also be picking up um, for more new and from more and And just to see the game, we're not going to be as, um, as, as part of um, the conversations that goes through. We're just using this today purely to illustrate what a legal service could look like. Yeah. We're not going to go out if council approves this for consultation. We are not going to be going out talking about the, the Roxford Pool. These are very um, rough numbers that we've done, done modelling on. Um, if there was to be a conversation down in the future that the, the TVET community would want to have, we would do the, the modelling at that point. It was just purely for illustrative purposes to act. I know there's been few But if we need out the the time time time. and we didn't show the potential pull, then it's not going to look very good for the TV, is it? No one's going to be that interested in digitising. That's, that's, that's not what's being said. What's being said is yeah. we have to, in order to prepare the, the numbers for proposals for the LTP, mm-hmm. we have to say whether or not we're going to go down that path. Mm-hmm. Earlier this year. So, if it comes in slides after all this workshops and discussions and everything else goes, no, you know what, we're just going to stay the way we're going, then the LTP code is going to what we've always done, the way we've always done it. If we, go, if we are saying, yes, we're going down that discretization path, 
that means that in the LTP, should we wish, and should the period in this instance say, the LTP would then model for what, what it would mean if the pool came into the hole. LTP would then model all of the different things. The LTP may model what happens with those down in the halls in year five. Mm -hmm. We have to. Yeah. Under a district lens instead of under, uh, but but the, the first branch of the track is what's getting decided in August, whether we're going to keep the status quo, whether we're going to districtise it. Then the LTP will decide what all the districtisation stuff actually means. Yeah. But we've got to say we're going down that path before we start all the marketing of doing what, what it could look like. So in the LTP, you may well see things such as the Tibet Valley Community Board, after a long consultation with the community, might go, you know what, we'd be a lot better off if the council took over our pool. They may not. They may say, no, it's ours, but there's a consequence under that. And this organisation, Money and Tono may say, hey, we still want to keep our five halls and we want the district to pay for them. The council would then in the LTP have to make those decisions. So it's where the decisions lie. But this isn't about what those decisions will be. That's next year. Mm -hmm. It's about whether we're going to put ourselves in a position to ask those questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, when it comes to the grant spot, how would that sort of 490,000 be collected and then allocated, do you envisage, under districtisation? All the base there, wouldn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. so, 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 so you're still going to keep it. You will, it, it, it will be one of the few things that is yeah. more base. So you will rate from your board and then you can use that then to give back to your grants. And it will be rated from the board at to the district level and then allocated on this one, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's symmetry. And so, in the other one, can you go back to the one that shows the pie? So the swimming pools makes up a big chunk of it. When you're looking at parks and reserves, mm -hmm. how do you anticipate that that would be spread across the district. Um, sorry, I was just going to say, at this stage, it would be status quo, and that would be, again, the level of service. So if you districtise it, so all it would be is bringing it up to uh, to one financial pot. Mm. Um, any changes in terms of what's happening in Vincent or Cromwell, that would be for council to decide um, through the LTP. Um, so we would like the museum conversation, what we see if, if that was agreed as part of this, is that unless the council agreed otherwise, there would be still 82,000 going to Central Story, still 40 odd thousand going to the Cromwell Museum, that would be a future decision. It's just bringing it, it, it up to enable that future decision. And what's the difference? Do you give the figures of what currently people are paying for the um, recreation and culture charge, is it? Yeah, well, they, they, yeah we do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, do you know what the, what the amount is for each? Because that's a rating unit one, isn't it? Do you know what it is for each walk? Um, off the top of your head? No, <laughs> no, 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 it's off the top of my head. But if you don't, you need to bring your back to this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, sorry. Um, I think though, your, your talk of reserves gives a really good potential for uh, giving an example. So say say we've done this two dollars in things ago and we were just the from the half mile of AK. The rolling point group came and said, within the district, here's your problem areas. So the half mile happened to be in Vincent, that's, your, that's the number one area that we want to be to deal with. The decision would be still coming through the board. I would presume well, the board would have impact because what we'd be doing is any decision that is at a ward level, so it's not for everybody, the board would get to say. So the board would still get to say, hey, we think we should cut them down, we think we should stage it, we think we shouldn't cut them down, whatever. So that that grassroots tree group comes up. But when it comes to the council, the council would have made the decision on whether to chop or not. And frankly, it had already done that through the policy. It's only the clarity in the policy that was needed to sort it out. But here's the big thing. The number one area in the district to deal with all the clients, the repatriation of that would be paid for by the district, not by this. So again, it's those swings and roundabouts. Isn't it? And then, you know, next time the wild and fine group might go, Somewhere in Manitoba, this is our next worst problem, and everybody steps in and solves what is realistically our problem as a district, particularly as a district policy, they know what to do. Okay. Tina, just at the moment, Vincent's 
Reach in culture charges 513.73 and it's proposed in the new financial year be 586.52. And this is where we see the, the differences, for example, um, Chile currently is 413 and as I said earlier, driven primarily by um, that, that, that toll is not a, but that's that going out to 480. This is the regression. 480. 484, did you say? 480. 480. And do you know what the other two are? Uh, Crummel is currently 6079 taste and is going to 598 This is not So a decrease there. 695 is many in total. Going to 7875. So there is a bit of difference. Yeah. Well, I move on to the next. Um, but sorry, just mm -hmm. one question. Is there a quantifiable cost? And I think Robert Paul's a great example of when the community owns the pool, the community owns the project. Is there a quantifiable cost of, of digitizing that? And, and all of a sudden, there's a bit of ownership lost. I mean, we, we couldn't get a community ownership to fund the Alexander Pool. Um, the only care hall probably started with it, such a great wave of community support. And if it's digitized, we're going to lose some of that. Do, can we, do we know what that looks like? If, if the pool is always going to be owned by, by council, and what, what would have cost, how much more would it have cost us if the community didn't do work? Yeah, that's, that's the risk that's, that's pretty hard. So you might be able to well, we've we rated 500,000 for the pool and the total cost of 3 million. So we got the rest of our money from external funders. So it was a real, like, like even if our pool gets given back to council, our rate players in this community hasn't had to pay for, we've only, you know, 500,000 versus 3 million. So I think it is a real win win in that situation. Yeah. But then you have got the ongoing depreciation and the running of it and trying to get the staff and all of those things. So I don't think long term that would benefit to our group, but I think to a benefit to the district, absolutely doing it outside of council is a real benefit. Because you, you, you're going externally, we went to Otago Community for our Central Lakes Trust, lotteries, some um, funders that we had in the TV. So, yeah, we were able to go wide with our fundraising. Hey, uh, uh, not uh, available for capital as well. Student grants and, you know, a bit of trying to borrow in general. Yeah. 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 So, I just wondered, and I don't know if it's going to use Susan or Peter, in terms of Operational and staff time savings, what would districtisation bring them to the table for that? Well, we, we do have a very complicated rating system. And if you just go and open up the LTP and you see the variety of ratios that we have to use, and it is not transparent. If I look at my rates bill and I'm paying 0.0009001 for the service, I'm not exactly sure what that is. <laughs> and, and so, whereas if I know that I'm paying $215 for roading, that's transparent to me. I can see how I contribute. The staff time and effort that is consumed, like it's disproportionate. So 80% of our rates is funded through centralization, digitization, and 20% of our rates is funded through um, board based. I would say it's an inverse when you say what's the staff effort? The staff effort required to oversee, manage the board based rating system is probably 80% of our financial bill. Whereas the because it's just much more it's so much more complicated. Yeah. yeah. And, and the potential for human error and all that sort of stuff in all of that is a lot higher because it is just so much more complicated. Mm -hmm. Efficiency, effectiveness, they're not always arguments that will win the day, but a change in digitization, as it did to roading, as it did to free waters, did lead to greater efficiency within the organization and how they had to plan, manage, and oversee that sort of stuff. It doesn't mean that there's going to be significant cost decreases over time because there's always going to be an escalation in all our activities because just fuel goes up, fuel mm. goes down, so on and so on. But it will mean that it is from a organisational point of view, it, it, it will be well, less complex for us to manage a system that is more justified than mm. less distributed. It's going to be inefficient around four sets of box for having a single business. Mm. Yeah. You said that 18% is declining. What roads are declining? I think it was about 
22% three years ago. It's just because of the, um, the, the, the reduction of the total CBD hours. Um, increase. The, the district yeah. price stuff has got so much more expensive at three walls and road and so yeah. Uh, that's not that we've made decisions that have come later, I've not seen the district price actually no. in three waters. No, yeah. Yes, the pool's got bigger though, the sheer that is business size, the bigger like the big ticket stuff. I was thinking more of it about the draws that goes on trading, she does that under twine, but the white that's actually peak that's your first crop. The, the, the work's the same. Yeah. There's a lot of streamlining and like we have 165 cost centres that um, attribute rates to them. So that's ridiculous. So um, do you think you would have everything if all those things were justified? You'd go from 165 to. So we've actually got 297 cost centres, right. um, but we would probably take that down to all things less than 100. So we've got a message from Santa Fe Bottom Line, we're starting on the heads. So we can shout it. Sorry. Oh, I think just keep in mind long term financial strategy. We cannot just be thinking about today. We've got to think about the future. We've got, we, unfortunately, we're in this situation where. Um, Previous generations have consumed the assets without necessarily paying the fair amount for that service. This is going to be a sort of what solves that particular problem. It means that we're now having to put the cost onto the current and future ratepayers. Or expensive consumed by previous. I was having the silver bullet, and land sales, we've only got a finite asset per year. We've still got to have that conversation about how we are going to to bridge bridge that gap between um, what we can spend now and what we have to spend. Yes. Yeah. Then that's now TV. There'll, there'll be lots of moving pieces, and who knows what's going to happen? We don't even know what the, the new government's views are on three words. We might more today, but but assuredly, councils are going to own their own three water assets and presumably own the liabilities. Any conglomeration is about increasing the efficiency of how we do that within their own assets. So so that might help a bit. But something else would bother us in the bum anyway. Yeah. And and to say this isn't a silver bullet, you're exactly right. And but but it doesn't mean that we shouldn't invest yet because it will potentially help. And the land sales thing, it's really important that we don't think, well, we just digitise and then oh, we've got the land, we can do that, because that's an LTP discussion. And and beyond that, you know, further down the track, if we go, hey, we need to do X and we think we'll send the Y, given the size of things, we must sure we're going to be a significant engagement trigger. We'll have to have that debate again. It doesn't mean we can suddenly, you know, the lid's off the cooking jar and we can put our hand in it and not have it. I mean, if, if anything we can learn from watching what super government's done in the past, and it's that thing about selling the, the family silver. Yeah, it's a bit like the debate to be going from now on. Yeah. No, it's like, there's a bit of hang on to these things in the long, long term. Yep. And they would they would absolutely have to be a discussion if ever we were to be in space. Yeah, it's, it, look, it's exactly the same as, as Mayor Brown selling the Brooklyn Airport shares or the council under him selling the Brooklyn Airport shares. That was an option that they had because those airport shares were available for sale. They looked at it, they looked at the books, they decided that that was the right thing for them to do then. But I guess where we're sitting here is imagine if the money for those shares was only able to be spent in South Auckland where the airport is. Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of doesn't make sense when your costs are right across the place. We don't have that option to even consider it, and that's what this would be opening up the option of considering selling land, district land to district lands. And I guess in the analogy too, you also look at our growth rate and the fact that your airport shares only spent in South Auckland, but it may be that you build an enormous water treatment plant in South Auckland, but then enables you to open up further land in South Auckland to house your 12.6% growth. Well, Auckland City Council could, could, could use that airport money only in South Auckland, uh, up to them. They could do it more than that. 
because they're treated all as one district. And that's, I guess, for me, what this comes down to. Are we one district or not? If there's a problem in the Teviot, are the people in Cromwell immune to that? Do they not care? If there's a problem in Cromwell, do the people that not affect the Teviot? We're, we're 26,000 people. If we won't maintain sitting in our bunkers, which is yeah, but really just nice. we've dealt, dealt with the big issues anyway. The water and roading are the big ticket issues. The rest of it should fall into line quite simply. And it is always going to be a council decision. It always is going to be a 10 year plan, a long term plan. So, really, you could, I've, I've been saying you could stage it and bring in halls and swimming pools and then into libraries or whatever if you want to. But at the end of the day, the big cost ticket items, which are the big hitters, our roading and water, and we've got them districtized. So to me, it's a very simple formality if the rest of them want to get on with it, because the model, the blueprint is there. And you're right, Tim, you've got 26,000 people, you can't have it all fragmented like it is. And there's going to be winners and losers, and growth is going to be the thing that'll fix that. So to me, it's quite a simple debate. We've just got to get ahead around how the workings of it happens. I think you highlight a really valid consideration as I started off with, with it's easy to talk about discretisation, but the discussion we're involved in is whether we're going to continue discretisation or whether we're going to complete discretisation. Because mm. discretisation by and large has already happened. 82% mm. has happened. Right, we move on the community boards. I'm just conscious of time. Um, we'll due to finish at 11. OK, so this is, I think, going to be um, quite a, a fast part of today because we're actually going to have this conversation with the community boards. Um, so we're going to have that um, with all our community boards next week, um, which will be followed up with a uh, paper at the meeting starting on the 20th of June. If we just stuck to the next slide. Um, look, the role of community boards, which I know um, will be a concern through this process, basically, what does the future of the community boards mean? It is enshrined in legislation. And just going to your earlier point there, Mark, um, what it does actually say here is that um, the board should actually prepare an annual submission to the TA for expenditure within the community. Um, and actually, there's been some recent lessons learned from our neighbours over at QLDC around actually not having, including the Wanaka Community Board, enough in that process. So I know QLDC are really working hard to make sure that their community board um, voice is really heard. So I think we just want to put that side up um, initially to, to make it really clear. As part of this process, it doesn't mean community boards go. go. They've actually got a really important role in this community. Mm -hmm. So we just go to the next slide. So, so Wayne and Sarah have done a whole lot of work looking at community boards across New Zealand um, and the types of things they do. Um, so there's a whole lot of ideas um, from Wayne and Sarah on this slide and the next slide around if digitalisation was to go ahead, um, what that means for the meetings, what do they look like? What does the um, you know the, the conversations you're having with the community, the, the conversations you're having with um, council look like? So what we intend to do next week with each community board is have a really good conversation around what is important in their ward, um, what good would look like for them, how staff, um, you know, an ideal world, how, how staff would um, um, support them and actually talking um, to the CEO. We actually think if digitisation goes ahead, there's actually going to probably be more staff effort in some respect, while it will streamline our financial system in terms of ensuring that the community voice is heard, it might need a bit more effort um, from some roles here in council. So if we just put to the next slide there, Wayne. And again, this is some um, more ideas to thrash out next week. So we're going to talk to each um, community board because it could be what Prime is thinking is quite different from, from the money in total. We're going to bring that all back um, to, to council, those those conversations. Um, so unless, of course, there's any um, questions at that point, we'll have those conversations with community boards and bring it back. Well, yeah. Unfortunately, we're going to be away next week, so that's not going to happen for us. But the key thing that I see is the ability of the community board to sort of bid for uh, activity, whether that be topics or whether it be things, and how that, you know, how that can happen. Sally, in case of the council, there was only one, one voice around the council table. Uh, and as a community board, we'd like to add to that, to add to that way. Um, 
So I think that's a really good point. So from um, the Local Government Commission direction with QLUC, um, what QLUC have been told to do is, as part of that um, annual plan budgeting process, is that they must consider the community board's um, submission um, on its own. So it's not part of all the other, so it's got a, an extra um, weight to be considered. So that's exactly the kind of things that we, we need to be thinking as we move through and this process now. That's something that we have not done. We haven't done, no. and, and when I say we, the boards haven't done it, and council hasn't done it, we haven't encouraged it. So, so, so I'll encourage. That's exactly. So there'll be three ways that I'll see at the moment. I think the, the, the better word would be advocate and bid, because it's not an option, but you're advocating for, hey, we need this in our community. Um, there's the monthly board chair reports, which we started the first one of that yesterday. If there's anything that comes to the board outside of your cycle, you just tell Wayne and you've got a slot. So that month we'd have two boards come and talk to us. Um, anything that is board based, a decision that's board based only, will always get the well, less time and marks it up, but we'll get the, the, the board's view before it comes to council. And absolutely, I would expect submissions from the board to the LTP and not as another submitter, but as a, a partner, essentially, uh, for one of the better work. <laughs> The boards have not been encouraged to submit any boards to the LTB. One of the changes which could come through this process is the boards would then use the LTP to get um, their community's wishes on the list. For instance, in Vincent, um, Turf, Longview, <coughs> but then, <coughs> then if I'm guessing rightly, but if with disorganisation things, then we'd be having a bit of a picture of you or whether something like Arfshire and Turf in Molyneux was a necessity. Right. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And the same, so there's going to have to be some work done parallel to this, isn't there? Like with, for instance, along, along those, those reports we've had from um, Sport Central about, you know, we decentralise your. So, so, so that's probably a really good example. So in, in the future, if we went down this path, council would get, when it came to the LTP or potentially an AP, but let's be the same boy LTP, we, we might have a list of, here's, here's the sporting projects in Central Otago that are either being advocated for by a board or staff have said, hey, actually this turf's worn out, and we'd have a but, whether, you know, some, something that's controlled by the impact on racks and so forth, or more a deep deep that we need. And so it may be, hey, we need to relay the turf here before we build a new croquet court in Roxburgh, because that's by and this is going to be something new. But actually, I'll take it a step further, and there would be nothing to stop the board leading local fundraising that the council could match and make it. You know, there's all these, we're building it as we go because we don't know what we're going yet. But those are the things that the board could take the role and say, well, actually, we'll work. If, yes, council, we know you don't have 50,000 to do what you want, want us to do, but have you got 25? And, and we'll go locally to do it. Those are, the, those are the things that I think are why I open in this conversation. Because what the board would be saying is we want the district to pay for X in Branfield or Nasby or Hedford. We want the district to pay for it. And then it's a matter of the district has to look at all its other priorities and go, actually, you know what? Even even though it's something new, that, that's really necessary. You've shown the need. I can't think of an example. Well, if we want, we want a tennis court uh, to become this, uh, one small tennis court, as against modern, the whole of modern new park for a whole hockey or soccer field. Yeah. How did you decide? Well, that, that's where this table would have to make a big decision based on the district's whole needs. And that's where the board would come and advocate. You'd fight your corner. You'd fight your corner and go, hey, we've got a tennis club with, you know, here's 60 people who have committed to signing up to a tennis club if, if we had a court. Oh. As opposed to, here's a tennis club that we're looking at resurfacing that we know 10 people are using a week. Well, you know, those are, that's what's going to have to happen. But when there's only so much money, and you've got to remember too that when it's sort of board level when it's going on rates, well, again, it's just you guys paying for it, so the impact's far greater. And uh, it's going to be interesting but in the long run because got the potential to work with what, what, what the boards can actually lead in this. It's going to be up to the boards. And this, this, what we've done in the past is we've all been in our lanes too much. And I think we go back to the days of the, the Cromwell hangar debate. But absolutely, we should have had the Cromwell Community Board's input before Council made that decision, but we didn't see it as being 
Am I the only one? Martin, am I the only one? <laughs> um, you know, but it was it, it it was within absolutely within the gamut of the community board. We didn't think to ask because we were stuck in our lanes. There'll be no lanes for the community board. You can come and talk to us about whatever you want. Mm. All righty, so further conversations have with each community board on yeah. that. Um, um, so our sort of final work stream is engagement and consultation. So two different things, engagement is obviously uh, working right in the outset um, with, with community boards um, on what this um, might be, and obviously consultation, when we talk about consultation, that's that formal consultation piece if we get to there in um, August. So look, we have heard um, from the community boards um, and we have learned some lessons from the delegations decision paper. Um, there was definitely a strong thing coming from our community boards that you felt it was very rushed, that you were part of the conversation um, and that essentially has been forced on here and your feedback was not timely enough for it even to go into the final decision. So um, we are rectifying that obviously starting right now with having community board members um, of this first workshop. Um, so as I uh, said earlier, we are going to have workshops next week with all our community boards, um, which apologies for those that are here today. There will be uh, similar content. We will draw out a couple of particular issues for each ward um, and then obviously have that conversation around um, each community board and, and what the future could, could look like. Um, so Paul has been working really hard on the overall um, comms and engagement um, plan. Um, so what, um, and that's also part of that, that real formal process, we will be bringing that to the June workshop um, with, with the council around what that term of engagement looks like. We're already starting to work on that because we need to get things booked in. So, for example, business breakfasts and things like that, that we are um, near term and the CEO will, will front that, but there will be opportunities um, within each board for obviously the community board members, if you wish, to be involved as well. So more to come on that. Um, so what um, it looks like, if Council decides to go ahead in the July decision paper that would formally consult with our community in August. Um, we imagine this will, will get a bit of conversation in our community, um, which will be hearings and deliberations in September. Now, why that um, time pressure is essentially we are starting very soon on a long term plan. Um, so if the community um, was to um, be supportive and if Council ultimately makes that decision come September, we obviously would need to change some stuff in the back end of the, the budget stuff. So hence why we are aiming for that September deadline. And then also, as we mentioned earlier, um, there is a paper line on the table around the delegations that we have to bring back before the end of the year. So that will tie in with that, that time frame. Um, and then, of course, as we've already talked earlier about um, the long term um, financial strategy um, implications here. Anything further on that? OK, so the, the final slide. Um, so where we are at the moment is obviously on the left hand side, we call it optioneering. Um, what you've heard today is those five bullets there are the, the key work streams that we need to, to work through. Uh, obviously today we've got the council and um, many more members workshop. Um, next week we will have um, targeted workshop for each committee board. Um, there will also be um, a report that will go to each um, community board. This will be more part of the formal process and if each community board um, wishes to, there will be an opportunity to do a, a formal submission for one of a better word. But what we are um, aiming for, um, that, that is one avenue. Um, the other thing is for the, after we've had the workshop and the reports presented to the community boards, is again um, to have a similar workshop like we're having today. Um, and really the focus of that will be hearing um, more from the community boards around um, their thoughts, et cetera. Um, then um, we will next then, as I said earlier, aim if everything goes to plan 31st of July for a decision paper by council, um, and then we will begin our formal engagement. So that's also what the process looks like. Um, any questions on that slide? Not on that slide as such, yep. but I guess when it comes to the engagement and the public consultation stuff, mm. the big sticking point that was kind of highlighted last time around was the issue of endowment land and yes. how that is applied if we were to districtize things. So Jim, to check I've got this right, endowment land can only be used for the purposes of that 
borough or wherever it was from. Of that but endowment of, of that groups of that endowment of that endowment. All slightly different words. Yes. So say it was endowed in Cromwell. If For the purposes of the, the borough. If the purposes yeah. of the borough in Cromwell, land could be sold and only used to build something in Cromwell. Correct. But town it could be seater, used town centre, not ward. Sorry? But it's not the whole Cromwell ward. Um, because the previous rural parts of the world in Vincent County it was quite small. Yeah, but you could use it for something digitised. So, for example, yeah. you could yeah. sell a piece of, hypothetically, sell a piece of endowment land in Cromwell and use it to build, say, the road that will go around the new town centre, which would have a, a district benefit because not everybody will be chipping in for that, but it would stay within Cromwell. It wouldn't go to build a bridge in Maniatoto or Correct. water treatment plant yeah. in Alexander. Yeah. Just yeah. stay in that area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But could be used for district things that are already discretized. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that again would be a really important role for the board, wouldn't it? To say, hey, we, we actually would prefer to have a, a two lane road around the, the town centre rather than one. We'll, we'll, we, we can work on different things. You know, they would advocate, please do this. We get that out there. So going back to our early discussions when this first, first, first race was up in the head and we had the delegations coming from down the valley and accusing this council of a land grab. Mm. And what we've just heard then is the benefits to the district from the land grab is the fact is that um, the district costs will be then brought down because you're selling an asset to invest in that district, you know, so the, those costs become cheap. The cost of replacing uh, the wastewater treatment plant in Cromwell benefits from the, the land sales in, of, of Cromwell and down the land, therefore the residents aren't paying quite as much. If that was a plant that future councils yes. to go down, yeah. that, that option would be open. And that because a thing which came out of our original discussions was that this council was going to do an asset grab of mm. Mm. And the reality is we can't. No. And, and back then we couldn't either. And the law was quite clear. Yeah. Yeah. And the Amsterdam Council was quite clear on that. Yeah. It was just, there was commentary that, but the fact is, the government man is very clear in law and how you can treat it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, interesting thoughts. My all right, is that the end of the presentation? Mm -hmm. Well, if, if people have got more questions, we yeah. would love to hear them. But if you don't, we won't hang around and keep you from your other busy lives um, for no good reason. If you think of questions later that you haven't thought of now. Uh, is anybody online got any questions? All righty then. Um, mm -hmm. yes. ah, yeah. It might be difficult to, to tell, but do you know what the cost savings would be from having fewer cost centers? Um, no, not at the It's it's administratively, it's more about um, improving the efficiency and um, and the trans the transparency because because we get it so complicated it's very difficult to, to actually show people and talk to people about what's included and what's not included. And I think um to actually one of our conversations in, in council yesterday would actually enable the finance team to be focusing on more the strategic issues of partnering across the business so that we've got all our finding our projects right and we're um we're we're working um at that level rather than doing four sets of mm -hmm. lots of five sets of both. So I think that's in terms of uh, we, we wouldn't be saying, right, OK, because of this, we can afford to get rid of an accountant um, mm -hmm. as such. Um, that you know, I think it would just be other more important work would actually start happening. Yeah. All right, folks. Thank you very much for taking the first step on the journey with us. Um, for the first few steps, it's been a big one. And as I repeat, um, if you've got more questions, who you ask? Thanks very much. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thanks for a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you.